lot of people in a lot of communities that were doing things that I cared about. Um, the issues, particularly around economic inequality, were very live at that moment. I was really excited by the 99% language. The slogan of the 99%. The language of the 99%. And the idea that all of our grievances were connected and that we had common cause and that the we could be quite large, actually, and quite pointed at a system that was only benefiting a few. You have to remember, I was in the business of trying to radicalize and activate communities of faith around issues, social justice issues in New York. And this felt like they were taking a huge leap forward in the analysis. Many of the particularly white people coming involved in this did not see a connection with police and with, with racial justice and racial injustice. This lesson about how economic injustice in this country is is built on racial injustice and works through racial injustice. Um, also a lot of toxic racism inside Occupy. It's worth mentioning. I think that that was one of the first uh, major moments where you could see Occupy people dealing with the idea that, hey, maybe this, this movement doesn't impact everybody in the same way. The problem is they didn't really respond well to that. From every synagogue and mosque and church. From every synagogue and mosque and church. To remind this country. To remind this country. That there can be no such thing as justice. There can be no such thing as justice. Until there is economic justice. Until